So let's have a look at comparing physical and chemical change. We'll have a stick example in there with water, and it's going to be sweet. Let's go. So basically, we know it, we, we roughly know that things change. So what are the differences? Basically, physical change is the breaking of intermolecular forces. So this is the forces between molecules, whereas chemical change is breaking the forces intramolecularly. So if we've got um, oxygen just sitting there floating through the air, and here's another oxygen, um, a phys actually, we'll make that water, okay, because that's what we're sticking with. So um, because the hydrogen's a little bit positive and the oxygen's a little bit negative, there's an attraction between these two, and these guys will repel, and these guys will attract each other. So when it's a physical change, we're breaking these bonds. When it's a chemical change, we're breaking these bonds. These are the intermolecular ones. That's a mo molecule of water, the intermolecular ones separating them. Um, because we're only breaking the intermolecular forces with a physical change, there's no new substance formed. This water that's up here will stay water. It won't change to anything else. Whereas if we were doing a chemical change, a new substance would be formed. You wouldn't have this water anymore. You'd have um, maybe some oxygens and some hydrogen gases hanging out. You would have something new, new substances. Now, there is no forming of new bonds, new intramolecular bonds with a physical change. You are just going to have new intermolecular bonds, if any at all. Whereas in a chemical change, you will form intramolecular bonds. Okay, so a new substance is formed. Okay, so here's the intramolecular bonds before. Here is the intramolecular bonds you have now. So between, within the molecule, the bonds are different. Um, you only need a moderate amount of energy for a physical change, whereas for a chemical change, large amounts of energy are involved, whether it's released or absorbed, large amounts are invo involved. Physical changes are very easily reversible. So if you boil your water and you've kept, kept it all, it will condense out. If you have melted your ice, you can refreeze it. Whereas if you change your water to hydrogen and oxygen gas, it's very hard. It's actually it's quite easy to burn the hydrogen, doesn't matter. But it's not easy to get it back into water. It is not a reversible change. Um, physical change. Examples are change of state, change of shape. So if you bash something or cut it, filtration, evaporation, they're physical changes. Chemical changes, chemical reactions. Um, when you break the egg, that's a physical change. When you cook the egg, that's chemical changes. So let's have a look at boiling of water. We get a steam vapor, a uh, steam vapor, a vapor. That's all fine. This is our heat source. This is our beaker of water. These are our water molecules. And what we'll notice as we start to boil it is that the water molecules will lift into the air, but they are still water molecules. They didn't change anything different. So it's a physical change, and it's a change of phase from liquid to gas. It's called boiling. No new substance is formed. Steam from water, not a new substance. Same thing, different phase. A moderate amount of energy. It doesn't take that much energy to boil water or to get it to evaporate. It will do it in sunlight. Um, and here we go. Here's our equation. It goes from H2O to H2O. The only difference is this L or G, which means liquid, gas. That's it. Now, if we have a look at electrolysis of water, however, that's a different story. So here we can see we've got water in a beaker and we have electrodes there. That's They've used pencils because you can use carbon to do it. Electrodes here. And we have a source of energy, which is our battery or a transformer. Um, here we have, so what happens, water here. Um, and when we run electricity through it, so that's a lot of energy compared to just a little bit of sunlight, a lot of electricity, a lot of energy, sorry. What we have around the cathode, which is the positive electrode, will have oxygen forming. And around the negative electrode, which is the anode, same as cation and anion, we'll have hydrogen gas forming. 
Um, so a chemical reaction happens. It is a decomposition reaction. H2O decomposes to oxygen and hydrogen. Therefore, new substances are formed. Large amounts of energy are required for this to happen. You've got to break bonds. And it has a completely different product side to our reactant. So H2O, two of, gives you two hydrogen gases and two oxygen gases. That's the differences between a physical change and a chemical change with some water examples. Hope that made sense. Um, if it didn't, ask any questions you want in the um, comments below and we'll get straight back to you. Or just say hi. Thanks for watching. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye now.